one. Good morning and welcome to worship from our home as we are also staying in place as you are. We thought we'd uh, do our service right from uh, Judy's piano room in my office behind the camera. I have an assisting minister, my dear wife Judy. Good morning everybody. We miss you and hope we get to see you soon. Welcome to our home. We uh, have our coffee mugs here. Judy's got her genuine Lutheran coffee from oldlutheran.com. They paid for commercial time here this morning. <laughs> Not really, but it's a great website. Go there if you want any stuff that's Lutheran. We're going to start uh, with Judy playing uh, Prelude, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Appreciate that. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Judy is going to read our text today. A reading from Matthew 6, verses 25 and 26. If you decide for God, living a life of God worship, it follows that you don't fuss about what's on the table at mealtimes or whether the clothes in your closet are in fashion. There's far more to your life than the food you put in your stomach, more to your outer appearance than the clothes you hang on your body. Look at the birds free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God, and you count far more to him than birds. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks. Are you uh, essential or non-essential? Critical or non-critical, I think the term is now. I have here uh, Governor Waltz's uh, Emergency Executive Order 2020, directing Minnesotans to stay at home. And on page four of this document uh, begins a list of critical essential workers who are exempted from the order. I believe I read that about 78% of the Minnesotans fall into the essential or critical category and the other 22% are not. Well, I'm here this morning to lift up the non-essential 22% as a model for us this morning. So you 22% don't hang your heads, lift them up. For let's uh, face it, we're conditioned to be useful. We're conditioned to be essential. We are conditioned to have a purpose to accomplish as much as we can every single day. And as much as we complain about how busy we are and have too much to do, we take great pride in the fact that we are so essential and in such great demand. People who are busy, who have a purpose, who accomplish things are people who we believe and say are successful. And as Barbara Brown Taylor puts it, in the eyes of the world, there's no payoff for sitting on the front porch. When I put a worship service together for Sunday or for Wednesday night during Lent, uh, I want it to have a purpose. And the purpose, that theme, is driven home by the songs, the readings, the prayers, the meditation. 
And that purpose is to forgive, it's to save, change, transform, comfort, empower, and move you to action. So what purpose, what mission, what ministry, what life change do I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead you to this morning? Well, I want it to lead you to be non-essential. No purpose. Let me explain. Uh, the prelude song that Judy played this morning was Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. And this hymn that we had at our wedding, uh, it actually be 43 years ago this week, we were celebrating our anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> the uh, hymn, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, uh, ends with these words, Lost in wonder, love, and praise. Uh, the writer Charles Rhett Wesley claims that the goal of the Christian life is to be in that place where we have no more important work to do for God than simply to allow ourselves to be lost in wonder, love, and praise. Jesus seemed to understand how important that, important that was. At times, he knew he needed to be non-essential, non-critical. Everybody wanted a piece of him, whether it was healing or teaching, asking questions, or just to be in the presence of, just to be in his presence, he often ended up having to leave crowds and leave the towns that he wanted, where they wanted him to stay in order for him to go away by himself, to pray, to lose himself in wonder, love, and praise of his Father. I believe by doing so, it opened his eyes, it opened his heart, it opened his mind, and opened his soul to be able to see the sacred, the holy, in the wonders around him. I mean, when Jesus preached or taught, he pointed out and lifted up flowers, birds, seeds, farmers, camels, fish, fishermen, taxes, tax collectors. He saw the holy in everything and the sacred in what was just right and good because, I think, he became at times non-essential, non-critical. So whether you're critical or non-critical, essential, essential or non-essential, we all need moments to be, I don't know if you heard that toward the last part of the passage that Judy read, careless in the care of God. Just listen to it again. Our worry and anxiety, Jesus says, can be taken care of if you look at the birds, free and unfettered, not tied down to a job description, careless in the care of God. There it is. Friday afternoon, we went for a walk, beautiful afternoon, walked around the neighborhood. It was oh, so nice to see people uh, out there talking to them on their front porch, uh, in their garage, ran across a small group in their driveway, not working, having no purpose, no planning, simply enjoying the sacred company of others or simply being by themselves. After we did our children's church video here at home last week, I told the kids that I had to go back to work. I had a lot to do, essential things to do. And they said they wanted to go to the park, and they kept begging, let's go to the park. And well, I figured they listen to me, I can go with them, so we went to the park. They were in no hurry to get to the park. I was in a hurry to get there, get it done, get back to work. On the way, they were interested in finding rocks, uh, interested in the dogs that were barking, the homes that were for sale, the street sweeper that went by, and the battle of who got the ride in the, question, in the, in the wagon. Pretty soon, I was uh, chasing them around the park, catching them, scaring them. Probably one of the best things I did all week. We all, at that moment, became uh, non-essential care less in the care of God, enjoying the sacredness of the moment. The Holy Spirit went to work, opened my eyes to that fact, and opened my eyes and heart and mind to give birth to this message that we're sharing together right now. And so I know that whether you're an essential or non-essential worker, retired, not retired, we all have stuff to do, we all have a purpose, stuff to accomplish, you have to get the job done. I brought with me a list that Judy has put together for me during this time of staying at home. I have to call the airline to try to get our money back. 
for the change in ticket we made on the way trying to get home from DC. Call my sister, call a Home Depot. They didn't send us enough light bulbs. <laughs> clean the garage, um, fix the dripping shower, clean my closet, pick up my shoes, clean the furnace room, put the screens on, get the flower beds in order, put my winter stuff away. I think that's a little too premature. But here's the list. We all have things to do. And in the midst of all that needs to be done, I ask you to do this. Do not forget the front porch. Call it the non-essential time with God. Not to make a point, not to achieve something, or even receive anything, but let that sacred moment happen for the sheer, useless, pointless joy of being lost in wonder, love, and praise. Amen. Now, if you've heard that shower, I promise I'll, or if you've heard that sermon, I promise I'll fix the shower. Can I wait on the rest of this stuff today? <laughs> you have a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't change your mind at all? No. <laughs> well, I'll do the shower and after I take a nap. How's that? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> all right, good. Well, uh, let's pray. Lord, you know us better than we ourselves. You know our cares and concerns. You know our purposes and our plans. Give us the grace to lay aside all of our cares and concerns, our consuming uh, purposes and plans, and to simply enjoy being with you as our worship continues every hour of every day. Love us enough to come to us, to reveal yourself to us, so that we might enjoy being with you and in enjoying you, come to love you even more. We ask this in Jesus' name who taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn now, uh, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified. It's pretty simple. I'll just shout, shout out the word, my life, uh, in our homes, in this world. And you can, hopefully you'll sing along with us. We don't want to just sing along on this song. So we'll sing, uh, In My Life, Lord, Be Glorified. so much for being with us. We're going to do the blessing as we go. Um, I'm just going to have you, uh, if you're watching this uh, worship service with other people, put your hand on their shoulder and uh, say that uh, you are blessed. 
say that to me. <laughs> you are blessed. And you are blessed. Now say it to each other. And for those of you that are uh, alone, um, I had a call last night I felt uh, very uh, sad about uh, visiting with someone who's uh, isolated in uh, assisted living and can't get out and now they're going to lose their dining privileges and uh, she said if people would like to call me or send me a card uh, I would so be so grateful for that and we'll let you know how to do that on Monday but uh, think too about all the long-term care workers that are out there we're grateful for our doctors our nurses all our first responders but also all these folks that are working in long-term care and assisted living uh, we lift them up in prayer too so to those of you that are alone today Imagine the arms and the hands of All Saints Lutheran Church and this community uh, embracing you and hear these words, you are blessed. So now go in peace, serve the Lord, uh, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. And one other thing, I think this service took us 45 minutes to put together because we kept stopping and cutting and laughing. So you'll get a, be a clean look, but it wasn't that clean. <laughs> Have a great Sunday. And again, we do look forward to seeing you in person. Can't wait. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> oh.